Hey guys, just wanted to pop on and let you know that we were on somebody else's podcast. We got to talk with Phil and Jeremy with Cast Conversations. We got to talk a little bit about our experiences working for the Disney parks. As you know, we both were cast members. It's always a good time learning the ins and outs of the parks and working there. And, uh, you know, a little bit of Muppet history in there as well, of course. So if you want to check it out, check out Cast Conversations on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Funding for the Muppet History Podcast is made possible by the amazing people who support our Patreon. Thank you to everyone who keeps us going, and now back to the show. It's the Muppet History Podcast with your host, Joshua Gillespie, and featuring Madison Mantis. Yay! Hello, and welcome back to the Muppet History Podcast. I am Madison Mantis, and as always, we have Joshua Gillespie with me. How you doing, Josh? Hi. Hello. How's, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. A little nervous for today, but you oh, know. Oh, yeah. Today on the Muppet <laughs> History Podcast, we have a very, very special guest. Madison, would you like to tell us who it is? Yes, somebody. Oh, my gosh. So... This is, this is the best day. This is honestly the best day. Um, I don't want to give his whole bio away before we even start talking to him, um, but this man has a celebrated and elaborate career spanning 60 plus years now. He is a uh, Golden Globe, Grammy, Oscar winning actor, composer, singer, songwriter. He wrote songs for the Carpenters, Barbara Streisand, David Bowie, our very own Kermit the Frog. Uh, he wrote music for the Muppet movie, Emma and Otter, Muppet Christmas Carol, Letters to Santa, my favorite Muppet Show guest star, uh, one of my favorite songs from Daft Punk he was on, my favorite episode of Dexter's Lab, yes. the president of ASCAP. You guys, what does he not do? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Williams. Woo. Yay! Ah. It is an honor to have you on here. Oh, my gosh. It's a family reason to, be, to do anything regarding Muppets. It's just um, immediately, it's like, oh. it's like going home. That is, that is. I, that's I like, so heartwarming like to hear. I like that. It's like going home. That's that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Well, how have you been in this uh, yeah. crazy world we're living in right now? Well, you know, I, I no longer speak itinerary. People, you know, 14 months ago, people would say to me, like, how, how are you? What's yeah. going on? How are you? And I would answer, well, I just was in Dublin. I flew to D.C. And then I was, and so I was speaking itinerary. Yeah. After four, after 14 months yeah. when somebody asked me, you know, how are you? I go, I'm really, I'm healthy. I'm grateful. Uh, a little, a little cabin fever. I admit to a little oh, cabin yeah. fever. But I'm finally, you know, we, we've been working, you know, I, I work for ASCAP and, and uh, the uh, the entire, all employees who have been grounded and we're all working from home. Uh, but uh, but I finally, I just was given the okay to fly to, to uh, Colorado and meet my new grandson. So I'm very- Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, congratulations. You. So I'm excited to meet him. I'm, I'm almost as equally excited to get on an airplane again. <laughs> Oh, I bet. Gosh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. oh, my gosh. Oh, that'll be great. Um, so actually, quick question before we kind of like go in. Before you worked with the Muppets, were you a fan? Because this is a fan podcast. We like so to we... know what your Muppet history is. The, I always say the best thing about what I do for a living is I didn't have to give up my fan card to do it. You know, I I can yeah. still go, oh, my God, it's Quincy Jones. And they go, hi, Q. And like, oh, hi, Q. I'm being so cool. But the fact is, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm a fan of, uh, of the people that I work with many times. And, and with, with the Muppets, I mean, out on the road with my band, uh, the one thing that was constant was Sesame Street. I mean, where you you wake up with a hangover somewhere in Mid America, and click on the TV, and all of a sudden it's just it's like it's Big Bird. You know, <laughs> it was yeah. It's so you know, but I mean, I, even back to like the Ed Sullivan shows that that, that Jim did with the Slinkies and the well, mana, 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 all that. Uh, yeah, I just loved him. I loved him, and when I went over to do the the Muppet Show, which is when we met for the first time, I flew over to England, and I have to say it was just it was like. There's not a word yet for old friends who just met. To quote one of one of Gonzo's songs that, that, that mm -hmm. Kenny and I wrote for Gonzo, yep. 
that's exactly what I felt with with basically the all the Muppeteers, certainly with Jim, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I was a big fan. And I'm going to get rid oh of that little, uh, some of that sound is coming from my mail coming in. So I'm going to just turn that off right now. Oh, you're good. I was going to say, popular, yeah, right. Mr. Popular, getting all yeah, the it's, bing, uh, bing, bing. You know, it, it, it's it's one of those things like, oh, my God, is that is that an angel getting his wings or is that me getting, <laughs> yeah, right. you, you know, you know, political mail asking for money, which is what Every every two seconds, yeah. you know what? I'm glad that the iPhones they made a button on the mail. It's like, do you want to unsubscribe? I'm like, I don't even subscribe to this. Yes, please. Like, please, yeah. That that's that's been the biggest problem. Is uh, I listed my business email on my Twitter, and so it's like, oh, cool. Now everyone's gonna sign me up for their their newsletter. It's a I good no prank. I mean, <laughs> okay, we're I think we should be okay now. If it keeps going on, we can all do something about it it's again. No worry. Um, now, speaking of the Muppet Show, tell us about that process. Like, they're, did... they're absolutely favorite moments in that. I mean, one, one of the one of the the first things that I that I witnessed, you know, as far as working with the Muppets is when I watched it. I watched when I sang "Sad Song," yes. and watching Rolf, and, and and it's really a sweet moment because we, I'm singing this sad song. You guys know it. I would assume, of course all of them but mm -hmm. but there's muppets behind me singing you know backup voices and it's a sad song that used to be our song the one we just played and at the end of it there's a wonderful moment where where Rolf closes the piano the lid to the keys and kind of pats the piano a couple of times and looks at me like that's enough of that for now it says yeah. it's, it's so gentle <laughs> and sweet and sad and uh, and it's just the layers to the work that the that the Muppeteers do, I mean, is just those little it, details. Yeah, those little details that mm -hmm. are so touching. And uh, and while I was was working on the the uh, the, the, the Muppet Show, uh, Jim Matt told me that he was doing a. We were going to do something a little different. He said we're going to do a, a special for HBO called Emma Otter's Jug Band Christmas, and I think it might be a nice fit for you to do the. The, the songs for it. So I wrote the song. I, I mean, with basically, you know, the only exposure that I had to Americana music was probably Stephen Foster. You know, I, I, I wasn't listening to a lot yep. of, of that kind of music. I think that it, that it was in the, it was in the, the script and in the descriptions of the characters that it just, it just found those, those uh, corners of, of my soul. And, and, and I, the, some of the song titles were already in the, in the little book. Yeah, the, the, I was going to ask if you had yeah. if you read the mm -hmm. book first. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then I read the script, and uh, I was actually on the road, uh, and I think we we record. Actually, I came back to LA and right away recorded. Uh, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a, the uh, we recorded the songs. No, I think we, re we recorded some of the songs on the road. I'm not sure where, but we did the underscoring back in LA and basically did it with my, you know, the whole thing was my road band for the songs and for the underscoring. Mm -hmm. And I basically just sang things to the guys in the studio. And we, you know, like the, 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 the little openings and the, the little pieces of, of underscoring were, were, uh, were created kind of on the spot. Very loose, very fun, and you very know, at, fitting, at this point, we're with a uh, you mm -hmm. know all these all these kids. Just we're gonna make a band. It's very fitting to have just little random bits and pieces going. Yeah, um, yeah. I really yeah. loved the release a couple years ago of the the album of it. Finally, just because you can hear those little bits and pieces of things in there. And I love it. Yeah. Or you thanks. can hear like Jim mm -hmm. giving out, a just going like, wow, out of nowhere <laughs> on the uh, river bottom when they're all. My favorite, my favorite lines oh my in there gosh. are, are, uh, you've got mashed potatoes and, uh, <laughs> and I've always loved, it's funny. My wife and I will, if, if we're, you know, we're witnessing somebody that's just obviously just nasty and, you know, being kind of cynical, whatever. We'll turn to each other and one of us will say, they, he seem, they seem nice. You know? <laughs> but just, but, oh my God. But what a treat to do that work. And, and oh. of course, you know, now we're, you know, we've taken Emma Otter to the stage and it will be eventually, it will, was supposed to have been this last Christmas, 2020. 
Uh, now it looks like 2022. It'll be at the New Vic in New York, which is a wonderful theater oh, right, wow. right across from the, the Disney Theater. And uh, Oh, I didn't know that. Emmett Otter is coming to the stage. Oh, wow. oh my gosh. I, I'm going to start getting ready for those tickets. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, we did, it, we did it two Christmases in a row for about six weeks at the Gold, at the Goodspeed Theater in in, in, uh, in Connecticut. And it was just wonderful on stage with the costumes and all those. The book was, the, the adaptation was written by, by uh, Tim McDonald and Chris Catelli, who were just fantastic. And Chris directed. And with the total support of the Muppet, of the, uh, the, the Muppet Workshop and the, uh, it was just, so anyway, we were very, very excited about that. But that was the first thing. And I think I was actually being auditioned for the for the, the Muppet movie when I was asked to write the songs for yeah, uh, yeah. Otter. I think Jim wanted to look. It was your, it was your test. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think he wanted to see if it was a good fit, and it, it clearly was. Yeah. Is. Yeah, it was. Yeah, oh, for sure. Now, I was going to ask, um, so we know about the uh, Born in a Trunk, which was recorded but never used. It was used in the, um, the yeah. stage show. Now, I was wondering, were there any songs like that for the Muppet movie? Any songs that were written or and just never used or ideas that you had? That it was like, well, we had not. no, we had a uh, we had a, 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 a kind of a. a a piece for the ending where we examined, you know, some of the the genres of films where there was something about about horror films and the like. Uh, and and uh, I'm trying to remember what some of the, the, you screaming you scream and try to tell a lady don't go in the cellar look behind you she's behind that door or he's behind that door. And I think that was that was uh, that was for uh, for the Muppet movie. We pulled it out though and and. Uh, trimmed the ending and just basically did the life's like a movie, write your own ending, keep believing, keep. And the big thing about the Muppet movie was that I knew that while I had done the, the songs for Emmett Otter by myself, I wanted that extra classy element of the, the, of the melodies and the music. So Kenny Asher and I, I had done most of written most of the songs for a star is born together. And I just, the connection that I had with, with Kenny was very sentimental, very, you know, just a great friend. And uh, so he came out to, to my place in, in L.A. and, and uh, we wrote the songs together for, for the Muppet movie. You know, I write about 80, when I'm working with Kenny, usually I'll write like 80% of the lyrics or, and, and uh, contribute to the music and it's the other way around with him but it was just a, that was just a great fit and the the wonderful melodies and the wonderful humor uh that that i'm so proud of in in the songs and the you know and the heart kenny is in certainly equally half of that great guy a wonderful man yeah absolutely oh. mm-hmm. now what would you say is your favorite song that you did in the muppet movie which one is it? I know it's like picking favorite children, but you know it comes down to two. I mean, I, I'm I'm proud of all the songs, but I have always had a special affinity for for Gonzo, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, of course that you know, that first song, Rainbow Connection, has had an amazing life, and so many people have done it, and uh, I think that that this the 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 amazing thing about about the first one we wrote with writing Rainbow Connection is we just wrote ourselves into this terrible corner with, with the first two lines. Think about it. Why are there so many songs about rainbows and what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions, but only illusions. Rainbows have nothing to hide. Oh, no. Oh, God. Wait a minute. <laughs> in, you know, in two lines, we absolutely denied any kind of magical, spiritual element to rainbows. We just, you know. Yeah. But, think about what a gift this was for us because you know an obstacle is sometimes an opportunity mm-hmm. so what's the next line so we've been told ah kermit is saying so we've been told and some choose to believe it i know the wrong way to see all of a sudden instead of being the you know the wizened old frog up there at the at the lectern and then you know sharing his wisdom now he's just he's come down off the stage he's essentially uh, metaphorically sitting with the audience and a member of the audience. So we've been told, and it was just, it was a total accident. And I just, I think it was, 
it was the influence of of some mystic element that hovers over <laughs> hovers, the, hovers over the Muppeteers and all. But, oh yeah. But my favorite will will quite honestly always be I'm going to go back there someday. Mm-hmm. That's that's always been my favorite. Yeah, so. me too. Gonzo's. It's one of the it's it's one of those uh, you feel like an outsider, but you you listen to that and it's like okay, I'm not alone. Mm-hmm. One one of the great stories about Jim is that when Kenny and I, you know, had first met and we, you know, kind of put the the places where the songs are going to go and discussed that with Jim and, and made those choices and all, there was never a song for that scene when they break down in the desert. And when when we we looked at that and we thought about, okay, here is Gonzo, who is a landlocked bird. I mean, we don't know what planet he's from. <laughs> But essentially, he's a whatever he is. He would appear to be a landlocked bird of some sort, and I've always believed that we are all landlocked birds. Mm-hmm. I think that, yeah, that 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 if we could, we'd we'd, we'd be flying for sure. Uh, but so Kenny and I thought about here's Gonzo. He's looking at this amazing sky, and he says, "You know, yeah, well, I, gee, a guy could get lost in that sky." <laughs> And then he looks up and, and he and he sings, you know, the, that song, which is a really it's a really spiritual look at at life. And and when it ends, we you know we go back to that place, you know, in in, in the heavens or whatever. So uh, we wrote the song and we played it for Jim. And Jim was like, "Wow!" And Jim, Jim had a great way of, of like he didn't say no. Yeah. What he said he's what he would say was. Wow, that's interesting. You know, well, he, you know, he, you know, make his sound, and uh, so we figured it was it was okay. That's a pass, I guess. <laughs> really, yeah. really sweet yeah. pass. And maybe a couple of days later, he came back and he said, "You know what? If we wrote at the in the state fair scene, if we wrote a thing where where Gonzo buys a bunch of helium balloons for Camilla." Mm-hmm. And he yeah. buys too many and he flies. All of a sudden he's up in the air and he's not scared at all. He's like, he's wow, it's, this is fantastic. It's like at some point he has this connection to that that experience that reminds him of home, that of where he belongs as a, as a landlocked bird. Yeah. And it just, and it absolutely blew us away that he would, you know, it stayed with him. Uh, and he was that flexible. And the amazing thing about him is that he let you do your work. You know, I, I have worked with people that that hovered and would say, I want to hear everything along the way. I offered that to Jim at the beginning of the project. I walked into his car after our first meeting and I said, Jim, I will call you and let you hear what we're doing so there aren't any any surprises that don't fit. He said, oh, Paul, that's not necessary. I'll hear them when we record them. And I have told that story almost every time I'm asked about Jim, wow. because I think it's 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 not only does it display his trust in Kenny and I, but it displays his trust in his choices of people that he wants around him to work with. And that includes all the other Muppeteers and the like. I think that he just, you know what, I'm going to get the best out of you if I trust my choices. Mm-hmm. And and it's, it's, it's just a great gift. It says so much about about the kind of really generous man he was yeah Absolutely. i feel like every time i hear some kind of story about jim from somebody who has you know been around him it's always the same thing he was just so kind and generous and you know and col- and yes and collaborative like i mean you know i mean who wouldn't want to trust you but still you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but he so rainbow connection just got entered into the national recording registry which is like, oh my gosh, for us, we were like, you know, Muppet fans were like, this, this should have been a long oh, yeah. time coming. But how does that, how does that work? Like, how do they pick songs? Like, how do they decide that? You know? I have no idea. You know? <laughs> oh, really? It's amazing. I, you know, I, I, I'm sure that I can click on it and find out. I'm not sure who, who all votes on it and the like, but but it's interesting. It's 25 songs. And of the, um, the songs that were included, you have uh, you have the first you have the first recording I think of Edison's voice is going in. Oh yeah, that's right. Right, right next to that, right next he's in the wow. stall right next to Kerman. So, oh my gosh, you know, makes sense. Yeah. You know that that's, yeah. that that I mean. Yeah, but it, wow. how exciting! How wonderfully exciting! Yeah, really. I was just going to ask. This is going back to the Muppet Show. Um, did you get to keep any of the? 
replica puppets of that they made up. I had one. I had a. I had. A, I had one a. You uh, have one. Oh, that's I so. Had a, a house in the Hollywood Hills in West Hollywood Hills, and uh, with a big natural natural pool out back that I had built. You could never build it today because it was so close to the house. But my little office in the corner had had a big mullion window with a, with a with a window seat. And uh, they felt Paul Williams sat in that window, staring out at the at the sunlight and the pool with his kind of wistful little face. And uh, yeah. and uh, after a couple of years, he he turned into you know what it's taken me eighty years to get to. You know, but <laughs> you look great, yeah. It, it felt about like about two years. He that that foam Trouble just began and, to oh, you know, yeah. trouble exactly. You know, so I feel pretty. You know, for eighty, I feel like like a you tired thirty-four, busy. Busier than I. You know what? I use the, the the this time for the pandemic. I you know I run or or jog every morning. I work out three times a week. I've been a vegetarian for years. If I'm lucky, I can do this for another twenty years or yeah. whatever I get. It's all extra innings, and I'm so grateful. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. It was just uh, there was another interview I saw you in the other day, and I was like, holy moly, he looks fantastic. <laughs> how how do I get to that at some point? You know. Uh, well, jogging, I guess. So I'm gonna have to yeah. pony up, I guess. You know what? It, it starts in the center of your chest. And, and, and to me, the two things that are, are fuel are generosity and gratitude. And as long as I stay grateful and, uh, and God knows the world has been generous to me and the, and the gods and the, the universe and the, and the, uh, and that, that whatever that that playful presence is that that manages to find really fun things mm -hmm. for you to do and, and i think keep doing what you love you know you're beautiful you'll oh, stay beautiful same same yeah. to you so i guess if we're going chronologically oh. next would be the the muppet christmas carol which carol oh yeah. man that is a that's one of those that yeah. oh it's it's the middle of july i really want to watch it <laughs> You know the uh, the thing about about the the timing of doing that was spectacular. I mean, it, what a gift! I I had my last drink September nineteen eighty nine. I, I celebrate my uh, my sobriety on March March fifteenth nineteen ninety because on March fourteenth I took a, a girlfriend's Valium and and I realized after about three years that that you know okay I had a I had an old prescription for Valium. But I, you know, I had a, a job the next day on March 14th. I, my girlfriend had, I had a headache. I had a, a, a job doing a, a mini series called People Like Us, you know, and I was nervous and I hadn't acted, you know, since I got sober. So I just took this volume and, you know, that would, would I would consider a, probably a slip but what was absolutely solid and made it a slip is i realized that i never told my sponsor in the you know in this organization that mm -hmm. saved my life that i don't mention by name but uh so i called him and i said you know what i got to change my date but think about this with 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 the muppet christmas carol i'm writing about a man who's just had a spiritual awakening he has a, a, a past that is is full of you know missteps and uh, and uh, this you know, amazing character defects who wakes up and and is just all of a sudden he is you know the the keeper of a thankful heart and so to write uh, the songs about something that I've just experienced when I got sober because everything changed and all of a sudden instead of hiding out you know lying about my drugs. I'm part of a community. I, I'm the cravings are gone. I've been in you know, 30 day treatment. All of a sudden, it's just I'm alive. I mean, I'm alive. I'm I'm doing life on life's terms, and I'm over the moon about it. So the way that I that, that we essentially you know that our world really turns when we when we start accepting what what is, uh, being grateful for the good in it, and uh, live in love and service. And the way that kind of acceptance and trusting the big amigo all of a sudden became the way that I wrote. So, and I've told the story many times, but, but you know, the Muppets were the first person, first group that would trust me to write their, their, their songs. I mean, by the time I got sober, my career had been pretty much gone for 10 years and I didn't even know it. So it was a big deal to get hired for an important film like that. 
Brian Henson, God bless him, said, yeah, come, come back, do this. Yeah. And uh, so I'm, sit, I'm sitting down for the first time in my life to write these songs. And I, what I do is I look at them, I look at the script, I'd read, of course, the, the novel, Dickens' novel, but I look at the scene, and the first thing was, was Disney wanted a, a song about Scrooge. So in the opening of the film, we see the, the you know, the, the, the door open and the feet going through the mud and the likes. Mm -hmm. And as, as these feet pass, uh, the little characters, they seem to get colder. And I literally looked at that, went out to a, a little park, took my little tape recorder and a pencil and a paper with me and a Lawrence Block bloody mystery. And basically I just said, big amigo, you know what the job is. Let me know when you got got some ideas. <laughs> Whatever that that creative energy is up there, let me let me know when it's time to go to work. And I read about three pages of that. I just settled it down and read about three pages of this this wonderful new novel by Lawrence Block, who I loved and still do. And all of a sudden, it was like I, I put the book down. And I went, okay, he's walking. But a bum 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 bum. But a bum bum. When a cold wind blows, it chills you, chills you to the bone. But there's nothing in nature that freezes your heart like years of being alone. You guys are pretty good. Thank you. Though. And it just... It, I gotta write that down. Yeah. It just pour, it poured out of me. And I realized that so much of my writing is, is, in, is basically unconscious. That I, know, I look at what I'm, I'm supposed to, to write. And what I used to do is I'd keep putting it off, putting it off. And then at the last minute, I would, you know, I would sit down and it would pour out of me. And I assumed I was procrastinating. But a friend of mine, a, a composer named Richard Bella, said, you're not procrastinating, you're, you're percolating. You've given it to your unconscious to, to, you know, it's like when you try to remember a name, you can't remember, you forget about it. And about an hour later, you go, boom, and that person's name comes out. Yeah. What was going you sit on? up in bed and say it, and you're like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, and it's it's so bizarre because because your unconscious is doing the work. I think that's where the creative process is. So these days, I just, I mean, with every one of those songs, I would look at what I needed to write, give it a week, boom, sit down and write mm -hmm. it like that. It's amazing, you know. And uh, I almost you almost feel guilty putting you know your name on it when you go, "Okay, I know I would I would." I sat down, I wrote words and I wrote music, but boy, there's some unseen forces at work there that are very, mm -hmm. very generous. I give them a writing credit on there. <laughs> so then, all right, if we're going chronological, um, Letters to Santa, right? Yeah, Letters to Santa. Was, yeah. Which, you, yeah. which you had a cameo appearance. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did. I did. As, the, uh, as the elf. Yeah. Like you just have that fun, you know, energy. And like, I mean, of course you were an actor too. So like, you know, it works. El Slizo, my favorite scene really? from the Muppet movie. I was going to ask about that. What was it like being in the Muppet, being in the Muppet movie? Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Let's, let's go back to that because I really, I really want to hear about that. Yeah. Well, you know, Jim just said, would you play the piano player? You know, it's, it's interesting because Kenny and I wrote this going, Kenny's the piano player. Yeah. So I'm just faking it and all. And I'm a terrible, <laughs> terrible musician. The, I mean, I hear, hear it all in my head. And, and this to translate to the keyboard, I'm like, where's that chord, you know? <laughs> that's so yeah. that's so hard to imagine, too. Oh, I know. But it, that's just the way it is with me. And, yeah. And it's like, you know, I, I love golf. I have a horrible golf swing, you know. But, <laughs> so, but It's not about being good. Yeah. It's just about enjoying well, it. Yeah. It's about being honest is what it is. And uh, there you go. There but it's you funny. Go. I've worked for years, including the, the first thing we worked on together when he became my my piano player was Chris Caswell. And Chris Caswell, this very I'm just finishing a musical about for, called Fortunate Sons. It's about the the draft lottery that was televised in 1969. So I'm writing all the songs for that. And what has happened for years is I'll, I'll write the song. I, I've got I have words and music. I mean, the full, I can hear the full arrangement sometimes in my head. And what's really hard is finding the chords. So I'll go out to, to, to Kaz and I'll go, you know, Kaz, you know, uh, uh, he must be so lonely. He must be so. Th this this would this would not be a great example because he wasn't around until the end of that shoot and all. But for the uh, the I hope that something better comes along scene, he played the intro. 
but but I'll go out now and, and I'll I'll sing something that is just there's a chord and it's so weird and it's wonderful and I can't find it and he'll go boom and he'll hit it and I'll go Jesus that was fat. <laughs> what is it what is it and I and he go it's a D <laughs> that's really, oh. that's rude are you kidding it's that's rude <laughs> you couldn't find it but it's right there next to it. Right there, oh my god! Right, there, right next, in front of your face. There, there's the uh, yep. the B flat, whatever. whatever. Anyway. Uh, oh man. Um, what was I gonna say? You, you know, you, I didn't answer your question. As far as, <laughs> as, far as yeah, as far as playing the uh, the the piano player. Yeah. Just great fun. Just great fun. Yeah. And and uh, this to be on the set, you really see how physically demanding. Being a Muppeteer is. I mean, the, forget about Jim being underwater with him, you know, scuba uh, gear, yeah. uh, in a, inside a, a tank in, in under a log. Uh, but just you know, just everybody working with their headsets and their monitors in these weird, strange positions and trying to operate, you know, over each other's shoulders and all. It's amazing that they don't have all have bad backs and injuries. I think some of them do, but I think mm -hmm. uh, Dave Goltz is an amazing athlete to, you know, do what oh, he yeah. does with Gonzo. The stamina. Yeah. Did they ever let you uh, have a crack at trying to puppeteer at all with like a monitor and like, here's your, like, here's your puppet. <laughs> Funny, uh, we did a thing at the Hollywood Bowl, you know, called uh, you know Muppets at the Bowl, and oh yeah, that's right. You know, pardon, were you there? No, I. Uh, oh my uh, gosh, I was trying to get tickets, and I had friends that were going, and they're like, "You're gonna come out? You're gonna?" And it just like didn't work. So I'm like, oh, "They gotta do it. It'd be great if they did like a tour, tour or yeah. something." Where, yeah. Where are you guys? Where are you guys located? I'm in North Carolina. I'm in Chicago. Ah. Well, it was really interesting because I'm backstage and I'm going to go out as a surprise guest to sing Rainbow Connection mm -hmm. with the Muppets for the big closer of the show. And uh, when I'm, I'm back there and all the Muppets, you know, that aren't being that aren't on stage are being, you know, are, are on their little their little. I, I hate to even say on their hooks, <laughs> but, you know, their little resting place between the jobs. Yeah. And I just walked up to take a selfie with with one of them and somebody's some stage manager or assistant or whatever swept up and went, no, 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 you can't take a picture with the Muppets. And I was like, okay, oh. all right. I'm a bad boy. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. hear what they're doing out there. I wrote that. No, I didn't do that. You know who I am. I honored what, what I get it. Yeah. I understand it. You know, when they're, the characters come alive when, you know, when they're picked yeah. up and mm -hmm. to me, they're, you know, they're absolutely individual unto themselves. I mean, if I'm talking to Dave, you know, and Gonzo and, and Jim and Kermit, there are five of us in the conversation, you know, because mm -hmm. especially if, if Frank Oz and, and, and uh, Piggy are involved, because Piggy oh, will say things to you that, that Frank would never say ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love That's it. why sometimes I wish I was, you know, I wish I did that because it's like, there's so much I want to say. I just can't, like, I just need to carry around a puppet all the That's time. That's the benefit of it. You can just, you can just do what you want. And you, it's the puppet, yeah. he said. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That wasn't me. I would never say such a thing. <laughs> When's this little guy going to get out of our face? <laughs> oh, <how>? you, <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't think I'd have any friends if that yeah. was the case. <laughs> Uh, it's always a reunion. I mean, basically any time I'm around the Muppets, it feels like I've gone home. I mean, it just feels like I've gone home. And, uh, and there's, there's just, there's, there's such a kindness. I mean, I've had, uh, Gonzo and, and Dave show up at things where I was being honored at. I had no idea that they were going to be there. Uh, just a really interesting thing that, that Frank Oz just did that there was a, uh, I guess it was a special, of, you know, Muppeteers talking about about the work, and yep. it, it was a great special. There was not a mention of the songs in it, and and they've always been so generous about talking about me and about the songs and the music, you know, that that uh, that we wrote. That all of us who got to work with the Muppets, mm -hmm. and I'll, all of a sudden I get a, a an email from Frank, and he said, "I want you to thought you might like to have these. They were on the cyber floor, cutting room floor, but just wanted you to hear what we all were saying of, about 
about you and about the work you've done and about when the river meets the sea and Jim's funeral and all this wonderful, wonderful stuff that uh, that whoever was editing and, and directing, you know, just didn't use it. But he thought to send it to me. And I, I mean, that's that's the kind of people, you know, that I've run to. Uh, run run into and 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 uh, have adopted me and I've adopted them and it's to me it's it's the elegance of kindness is is probably the most important single uh, character uh, element for a human being. It's just the elegance of kindness is a fair description of what it's like to work with the Muppets. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so great, and that's I love that that just can resonate with literally anybody. Like even if you know. You didn't work with the Muppets. I have a tattoo that says be kind to others. I, you know, it's like, if you can be anything, be kind. And I I like that that is something that they always stand for. And that, you know, translate to even backstage. So I love hearing that. Exactly. And and the other thing is that nobody ever said, we don't write down to children. We don't write down to anybody. You know, we write Mm -hmm. what is our spiritual truth and, and, uh, and we do it humorously. And that was basically the whole deal. Uh, yeah. my daughter, I remember my daughter had a, even, even into her adulthood, she had a, 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 a solid connection with ET's phrase, be good, you know, be mm-hmm. good. You know, that's, that's a bumper sticker to me. Be, yeah. Right. Yeah. What would Atticus do is actually one of my favorites bumper stickers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Um, you keep in touch with those guys still, right? Once in a while. Yeah. In a while, and uh, you know, because we're working on uh, you know, the uh, Amadata, you know, for the stage, there, there are a few Muppeteers that, that I, you know, I get to see once in a while, and it's it's always a, always as I say, always a treat, and it's like no time has passed, no time has passed. Yeah, that's the true. Yeah, that's the true test of a friend. I, I like that. Um, that made me think of the. Um... Oh, what's the name of the show? The documentary series on Disney Plus. What is it? Oh, Prop Culture. The banjo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. So tiny. Yeah. Tiny little banjo. Yeah. Didn't didn't they have the El Slizo uh, yeah. sign too? I, I, I think, think so. I think they actually did find find that. It was it was mm-hmm. stuck somewhere in the back lot of yeah, I, I don't really remember. I know that it was in pretty pretty bad shape, and they cleaned it up and the like. But but uh, yeah, that was a treat. You know, it's uh, again. Uh, but it's interesting because we shot that at A and M. What what it was is now the Henson Studios, mm-hmm. which, and before that, that was A and M Records. Before yeah. that, it was Charlie Chaplin's studio. So it's just you you see these wonderful old uh, wooden you know siding buildings that you remember from a Charlie, Cha- uh, Charlie Chaplin movie. Mm-hmm. And you go, wait a minute. That's, that's my office. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> that's where I wrote. We've only just begun and, and you know, rainy days, an old fashioned love song. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and you mentioned Daft Punk, I, you know, it's where, yeah. we, where we record. I wrote two of the songs and they all beyond and, and touch. Yep. Sorry. Right. And sang touch. And so when we're listening to the playback, of the album, I'm in the studio, they're going, okay, this is, this is uh, the studio right over there is where we got Linda Ronstan and, and uh, uh, all these superstars to come sing background on my, on a, one of my songs. And everybody thought, well, they must be really, really great friends. No, they weren't great friends. I was a big fan. Mm-hmm. But the fact is uh, whether it was Jackson Brown or Linda or, or uh, the, one of the kids from America, it's just, they were there. And it was a creative explosion for all of us. <clears throat> but it's interesting. I think there's there are spaces that that have a real energy that it, it, in New York and in, in the uh, in the 30s, uh, in Paris in the in the 1880s and 1890s with the Impressionists, and mm-hmm. certainly in New York with with Dorothy Parker and the gang and all. And it, it's I think that Laurel Canyon and uh, and Hollywood had that kind of energy in the 70s. It was a great time. Oh yeah. They, Spotify actually just came out with a, like a, they created like a Laurel Canyon, like playlist. And they were like, if you want to go tr- be transported back into that, here, here's everything. Right. And I thought that was so cool. Yeah. It was great. It was fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What well, I was going to ask this, uh, when I mentioned to my parents that I would get, be getting to interview you, they, 
I mean, they're they're almost in their sixties. They they grew up with your music. They know who you are. They they nice. know my my admiration for you. And my dad goes, I wonder how many songs he's written where someone will say, yeah. you wrote that? Yeah, there's, you know. There's, Are there any like that that you get brought up? It's funny because sometimes it'll be something that, that nobody, you'd think nobody ever noticed it. You know, it might be something like, uh, uh, where do I go from here? Uh, or uh, from Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, which is a song at the end of that movie. Oh, oh. Uh, what would they say from the boy of the plastic bubble with, with you know, with, uh, uh, but then you, then you get the, the, the ones that are, that are maybe a little better known like you and me against the world that so many single parents, you know, uh, had that their song with their kids, you know, and, uh, I don't know if you, if you guys even know the song, but it was a, a hit for Hillary, yeah. but you know. it was on the Muppet show. I oh, that's right. She said, mm -hmm. yeah, sang it on the Muppet yes. show. Oh, now his name's escaping me, but, um, yeah. Oh, that's going around, you know, just wait, yeah, just wait yeah. for another 30 years and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll message you on Instagram and be like, I remember it'll be like three months from now. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. <laughs> it'll come, it'll come bouncing out. But yeah, that's what I call a heart payment. You know, when somebody says, uh, there's a song you wrote with Yvonne Lenz and, and it's called love dance. And it's just, it's for my wife and I, that's a, a really important, I mean, my wife and I, that's a really important song. It's like she found this song and she really loved it and she wanted me to hear it. She didn't look closely at this tiniest names on the font. She, and she, so she sent me this, this, this song because she wanted me to hear it. And I wrote it. So it's like, <laughs> wow. but I know we need to get married. When you, when you send me, when you courageously send me some other songwriters, I can think, oh my God, he's going to think I got a crush on this guy now too. Uh -huh. No, it was me all along. So, uh, wow. but yeah, but when somebody comes up and they say, you know, that my little girl's learning to play Rainbow Connection or oh, we got married and we've only just begun. It, that's, that's a heart payment for mm -hmm. a songwriter. Yeah. I uh, was just actually at a wedding a few months ago and uh, when they were walking out, they had everybody with their like sparklers and they were walking out to Rainbow Connection oh. and everybody at me and I'm bawling my eyes out and they were like we kind of did this because we wanted pictures of you crying I'm like wow gee thanks but you know it's it's just so oh, man wow and even my mom it's... too every time she was like you're talking to Paul Williams she's like can you let him know that's like my favorite song ever I'm like sure it's everybody's favorite song yes I'll tell him like <laughs> oh oh yeah I have rapid she's fire, got rapid questions, fire questions. questions yes rapid that fire. won't be that won't be too long either um how many how many rapid fire questions i love these only only like 46 okay, that's good. So we, we, we 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 wendled it down the it, past couple days fine. yeah well now i have you you actually asked um wait hold on gotta delete that what sign delete that as you can see we're professionals here you know what the there's a, there's a lot of tension doing this show. <laughs> Come on, it, it's us. It's family. Mm, yeah. Leave it, leave it in. Leave it in. Yeah. I, I, I would say, um, so my introduction to you was the Muppet Show episode when they released the, the season, first season mm -hmm. set. That was where I first uh, saw you. I saw your, ep I think that was the first one I picked. <laughs> I was just like, eh, that, okay, cool. Who's that? Whatever, oh. watch it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that I was was seven when that came out. So, um, mm -hmm. and then it was just immediately like, I think maybe two years later, the Dexter's Lab episode came on Boomerang, and I was like, oh, "It's the Muppet guy. What's he doing?" I love, I, I, yeah. I loved that episode so much. I actually, I watched it last night, and I actually because that came out in ninety eight. I want to say so. I was four, and. It was funny because the song that you did on that, I, I loved it. I would run around the house and I would sing it. And anytime it was on Cartoon Network, absolutely loved it. And then when I saw you in the Muppet show, I go, he looks familiar. And then my mom's like, I don't how, like, how would you, I'm like, you never watched Merv Griffin. Yeah. Like, I was like, no, he looks familiar. And I was like, Dexter's lab. Oh my gosh. What a, what a connection. So that was, oh my God. I love that. It's all good. Now, do you go back and like rewatch these things you've been a part of ever? No, I don't. Uh, once in a while, if something's on, I'll, uh, 
I've seen the the Phantom of the Paradise a few mm -hmm. times because I've gone to you know to festivals where they screen it, or Phantom Palooza. You know, up in Winnipeg, there's a thing they do annually called Phantom Palooza. They're crazy, yeah, for uh, for Phantom. Yeah, but when I do you know, see something that it's it's uh, it's funny, I actually. I have a, a story of going to, to dinner right after after a Star Is Born uh, was uh, came out with with you know with Barbara and and Christopherson and I wrote most of the songs and and uh, there's a song in it called With One More Look at You and uh, I had dinner with James Mason who played the 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 lead in the in the uh, the Judy Garland version of that of, of a Star Is Born so I'm having dinner with James and his wife myself and I think Ed McMahon. And uh, I said, you know, James, there's a, there's a song in the, the new version of, of A Star Is Born that I that it was inspired to write because of you. And he said, oh, really? Well, how's that? I said, well, there's a wonderful thing that you do again a couple times in, in the, the, your version of A Star Is Born where you will say to Judy Garland that she's getting, she's getting out of a car and walking away You'll kind of go, uh, hold on a second. And she'd turn around and look at you. And you'd go, I just want to look at you. I just want one more look at you. And she'd go, oh, and she'd laugh and walk off. And so Kenny Asher and I, when we, we screened the earlier versions of The Star is Born, we, uh, we loved that. So we wrote with one more look at you. I could learn to tame the clouds and let the sun shine through. Leave a trouble past and I might start anew. I'll solve the mysteries if you're the prize. Uh, refresh these tired eyes with one more look at you. And, it went, and, he, and I said, so you wrote, in a way, you, you totally inspired a, my favorite song from, from a, our version of A Star is Born. And he said, oh, I don't remember saying that. I, oh, no. God, I haven't seen it. I haven't, no, but listen to this. He said, I haven't, I haven't seen it in ages. And his wife said, oh, bullshit. You know, I <laughs> Watching it like at three in the morning a couple of weeks ago. Oh like, it's like, the fact is, I'm sitting here going, "No, I don't like." It. But sometimes, if if uh, something that that just doesn't show very often, that's you know, because it's probably terrible, you know, like like smoking the Bandit <laughs> Three or something. <laughs> we'll go, I'll hit record and then watch it. Go, yeah, it was terrible, but boy, was it fun. Boy, it's with. it's one of those things you just get that little bit of joy. You're like, hey, yeah. there, that's yeah, me. Yeah. There I am. If you're having fun. That's all that matters, exactly. honestly. Yeah. And it just um, hit me while when you did that impression the of him. I love you as the penguin. Oh, thank you. that's the voice I hear in my head when I read the comic books. I hear your voice. You flying rodent. That voice, yeah, yeah. Thank you. We actually did a. You know, I, I, I've never sold an autograph in my life until recently. The animated Batman series did a did a, a thing with Galaxy Con, and I realized that I could, I could do it if I give all the money to charity, you know. And I have a thing that I do through ASCAP. I'm president of ASCAP, so the ASCAP Foundation. I have a thing called the Sun. The Marianne yeah. and I have a thing called the Sunlight of the Spirit Award, where we honor you know somebody who's who is uh, wonderful in, in music, but is also very, very passionate about the recovery. Usually somebody very, very young, you know, like in college or whatever. And uh, so I realized that I, I can do this and I can help various various organizations that work in recovery around the, around the, uh, the country. So I, I did that and I gotta tell you the, the the, bad, the Penguin fans, the, 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 these, are the, these are the groups that are the most avid. Batman, for sure. I did a battle for the well, battle for the Planet of the Apes. The Apes fans are fanatic. Uh, Muppets, straight ahead, straight ahead. Uh, God bless. Yeah. And uh, the other one is Phantom of the Paradise. You, you, you've got a lot of you've got a lot of little categories you fit into. There's, I, you know, I would show up if you ask me. I mean, I was like me in front of the camera, of course. You know, it was just. They were all they were all really fun things mm -hmm. to do. Well, you started off as an actor, right? I've always said that as an as an out of work actor. For an out of work actor, I've done really well in music. So I still love <laughs> it. I just spent two years or two seasons on Goliath with, with yeah, Bob I saw that. Thorne. And if you haven't seen, he's just it's like an acting lesson just to show up on the set with with Billy. He's a great friend. Mm -hmm. 
All right, guys. So we are going to do some rapid fire uh, really quick. Um, let's get started. I mean, Josh, you pretty much already made me delete three of my questions, but that's okay. You know, we got full stories out of them. So, uh, all right, you're ready. Ready. All right. Okay. Your top three songs that you've written for the Muppets go. I'm going to go back there someday. Rainbow connection and, um, uh, with the probably thankful heart. Perfect. All right. Um, your favorite Muppet song that you, uh, didn't. I have, I have, a, I have to change okay, it. I, I have to. <laughs> that's fine. River, oh boy. Take out thankful heart and put in, uh, when the river meets the sea. Oh, perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. <laughs> Your favorite Muppet song that you did not have a hand in, no pun intended. You know what? Whatever it is, I'm sure that Joe Raposa wrote it. I mean, uh, I I was am amazed that we were brought in to do the the uh, the the Muppet movie because, I mean, Joe just had a connection with the Muppets. It was fantastic. Uh, it's not easy being green. It's like that's that's the headwaters. Of, of of a side of Kermit that is just is so touching and so beautiful. Huge Joe Raposo fan. If you weren't doing what you're doing, so acting, composing, writing, music, what would you be? What do you think you would be doing as a career? Teaching golf. Uh, <laughs> all of it. What would I be doing? Uh, probably working. You know, I when I got sober, I went to UCLA and I, I got my certification as a, as a drug and alcohol counselor. Uh, I think that that I, I'm most comfortable at the center of the herd as far as the recovering community is concerned, and it's a, a labor of love. Uh, I think that I'd probably be working in in, uh, in recovery. That's great. I love that. That's amazing. Wow. And by the way, congratulations on what is it? Thirty years now. Thirty-one. Sober. Thirty. Wow! Congratulations. Wow. World's a safer place. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Greatest gift I've ever been given, ever, ever. So cool. I love that. Um, okay. All right. Uh, next question. These are very easy ones. Um, who do you most relate to in the Muppets? Gonzo. Gonzo. It just, yeah, it's like we're landlocked birds. As I said earlier, we're both landlocked birds. And I was a big skydiver. I made 100 jumps. I loved it. I love the way it felt in free fall because wow. you don't feel like you're falling. You feel like you're flying. Yeah. That relative. Do you ever put your hand out the window of the car and play with the air? All the time. That's what it feels like in your whole body when you're in free fall and you're doing relative work. And, you know, you just just even thinking about the right and your body will turn to it. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, Gonzo for sure. So then that leads us to our next or our last question. Who is your favorite Muppet? Mm, yeah. Gonzo. Okay. Gonzo. We're, we're made of we're made of the same cloth or the the same felt in this case. <laughs> it's just you know, I, I mean it's and I have favorites like crazy. Uh, you know, I uh, I I love Wendell and and uh, when they're in uh, Emma Otter's jug band. Chris, you know, you got mashed potatoes. Just just touches my heart. You know, really, really biting today, Emma. You know, it's just such a simple guy. Like. A simple guy, exactly. Yeah. Life is not complicated. He's got a shoe dangling from his, his fishing hook, and he's going, they're really biting today. And I go, oh, my God. Ugh. And, you know, you sit there, if, if you're writing the songs for something, and the underscoring in, in that case, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at the scene again and again and again, and I've just all of a sudden realized that I've, I've fallen in love with a porcupine. <laughs> what, what can I say? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Dr. Teeth as well. What? Dr. Teeth. You know, Ooh. that's the piano player I wish I was, Dr. Teeth. Oh, man. Well, Paul, it has been an absolute honor to talk to you. It's it's surreal. It really, honestly, is. It really because, is. Like I said, I mean, you've you've played a part throughout my whole life, whether it be the Muppets or Dexter's mm -hmm. Lab or Batman. It's you you have inserted yourself into my life, it appears, in just yeah. so many wow. different ways. And it is so, it is just so cool to finally meet you. Well, I have um, to tell you that, that this has been so easy and, and it's one, one more time, I got to tell you, there's something about the Muppets as a point of reference and a connection, but you know, if, you know, 
if if we sit down with with that, it tells me tons about you. It tells me tons about both of you. It tells me about, about you know your heart, your playfulness. It tells me about you know you, you know your sense of of just, of just reaching for something that's sweet in this world, and that's got to be the Muppets and all. I, it's a great honor, and you know what? We'll talk again sometime. And and yeah, uh, we'd love to have you yeah. anytime. You know how to reach me. All you got to do is ask, and I will get back to you right away. I promise. Thank you so much. Thank oh, you so my gosh. much. That that means a lot to us. It really does. Do you have anything you would like to um, plug? Anything you'd like to um, mention? No, I, but I would, I would like. I'd like to say this. I'd like to say that the things that I'm working on now. The opportunities to work with Edgar Wright on on Baby Driver or with Guillermo del Toro on Pan's Labyrinth as a musical, the, the, those opportunities exist because I made I made movies and and various projects back in the seventies, and some of them were not a big hit at all. I mean, Muppet Christmas Carol got bad. The songs got bad reviews from Variety. So it's the, it's the fans, and, and I, 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 I mentioned earlier that, that I'm a big fan. That it's the fans that kept these things alive and allowed the, the, the population or, or the, the world's awareness of the pro- projects you know, to grow and grow and grow. So what may feel like, you know, well, these people have a weird obsession with the Muppets or whatever like that. The end product of that weird obsession with the Muppets like that is that I have a really full life today. So whether it's Phantom of the Paradise or, or Emmett Otter or, 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 or even Smokey and the Bandit, the fact that, well, that was a big hit, but, but for the people that just would not walk away and loved what we did that I was a part of, you gave me the life I have today. And I want to say to the people that are watching you, uh, because they love, they, they love what you love and what I love, that, that they've been a big piece of my life as well. Collectively, you've done amazing stuff and and I will always be grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay safe. All right. Bye. And folks, I think that'll do it for this episode of the Muppet History Podcast. As always, if you'd like to follow us, it's History Muppet on Twitter and Muppet History everywhere else. Once again, we'd like to thank Paul Williams for coming on, and apologies to Dave Goals, we did not have enough time for him today. If you enjoyed the show, feel free to subscribe and give us your feedback. We love hearing from our listeners and are always looking for ways to improve and make the show even better. Hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you all next time on the Muppet History Podcast!